and present it in its best form. <coughs> we have, a, we have a, um, several questions um, relating to the same point, which is, um, <coughs> what was the um, specific situation about Islam that caused you to become a Muslim? What was it about Islam that is doing to the most? I would say, as I mentioned earlier, that I was raised a Christian. However, to be quite honest, I was a nominal Christian. Nominal meaning that I belonged to a particular uh, branch and I considered myself to be a Christian, as all of my friends considered themselves to be. But in fact, we were not really believers. Not really. Because I used to go to church along with my friends. And when we went to church, we were really not concerned with what the preacher was talking about. Most of us, when we went to church, our parents were going to show off their latest uh, Styles, and we were looking to see, you know, who's present. You know, is there a nice uh, young girl over there? You know, I'd like to meet that girl. You know, and the girls were going. Too. Is there a nice boy? You know, this, I mean, this is why we were going. I mean, people were not, you know, there in worship in that sense. It's just nominal Christianity. And that's basically you go throughout North America, you know, and probably much of Europe, etc. This is the way it is. You know, the churches are getting more and more empty. There, I just recently saw on, um, on uh, television, or was I reading a paper, that, you know, one of the churches is even making an act, a, 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 um, uh, an announcement to be run on television, you know, uh, you know, to promote the church. You know, like the way you have a product to sell, you want to sell your sell cars or they want to sell this church. They have to be working on a promotional campaign. Because people are leaving the church. And this is why they even at one point they even brought rock bands into the church. I remember. You know, people shifted from the piano and the, the organs and they started to bring in the band with the drums and everything. As a means to attract the young people back to the church. You know? This is this happened. Maybe it didn't happen in the Philippines, but it happened in North America, you know. And uh, we find, for example, even churches, we have churches in North America that are where the priests are homosexuals and the congregation are homosexuals. Because this was a means of attracting the homosexuals. Now, Christianity, according to the teaching of Moses, which Jesus said he came to confirm and not to destroy, a homosexual is cursed. And this is the teaching of Islam, it's cursed. This was the, the crime of the people of Lot. Lot's people, they were homosexual. This is a cursed act. Yet, now, many of the major churches are accepting homosexual uh, priests, ministers. And as I said, in the West Coast, they have their own church. So we find this, the religion being modified according to uh, whatever may be attractive to the people. So I went to church on this day. When I went to university, I got caught up in a movement for social change in America. And those who were the leading uh, proponents or exponents of these, uh, this movement were in fact communists. And I, after studying the principles of communism, decided to leave Christianity and become a communist. Why? Because communism said, we want to establish a just society where people are equal and the wealth is shared evenly, to each according to his need and from each according to his ability. Beautiful thought. And Christianity was saying, turn the other cheek. If the guy punches you in the head, you give him back your head and say, punch me again. 
well, I mean, to me, at that time, I felt that you could not change society, you could not establish any kind of, you know, justice where you're telling the oppressor, you can beat me up as much as you like. No. The oppressor has to be stopped. Otherwise, he will only increase in his oppression. So, communism attracted me and I became a communist. I worked with the Communist Party in North America and in Canada for some years. However, after working with them for these years, I came to realize that those beautiful principles which they called people to, they were not practicing themselves. Equality, with equality, they had what they call the first amongst equals. You see, the Communist Party, the leading proponents, they have special rights which nobody else has. This is why you had, you know, in Europe when the Communist Party started to break up and they uh, checked the, the leaders, they found that these guys were living, you know, so what's the guy in, um, was it uh, Czechoslovakia, Czechesco, Romania, himself his, and his wife, I mean, they were living and had stuff which compared with, you know, a meal de market. I mean, in terms of extravagance, they were in the same uh, bag. And this is what was happening there. I could see that people were not really about justice, so they were talking about it, they really weren't. And also, I saw in communism a total lack of morality. You know, because for them, what is moral is whatever suits the revolution, whatever helps the revolution. Uh, question, you being a Christian once, why did you enter the Islamic faith? If you will recall the Ten Commandments of God given to Moses on Mount Sinai, the first commandment of God is, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt adore me and love me above all. Same is true also in the end when man has to face God in the last day of judgment, on the day of judgment. Since these teachings are both found in the teachings of Christ and Islam, I don't think that Christianity is different from Islam. Christ came before Muhammad, and Muhammad could have based his teachings of Islam for four or 